Today, we're going to be talking about le futur antérieur or the future perfect as it is said in English. We're going to look at the definition, how it's conjugated, of course, with examples, its uses, as well as uh, past work, most important. C'est parti. Now, what is le futur antérieur? It is a tense that describes an action that will take place and be completed before another future action. Now, to form or to conjugate this compound tense, we're going to be using the future tense of être or avoir plus the past participle of the main verb. Now, you must know that the agreement rules are the same as passé composé. What do I mean by the agreement rules? It is simply, number one, we use être on verbs that are verbs of movement, which is Dr. and Mrs. Van der Tramp, or pronominal verbs. Secondly, when we use être to conjugate passé composé, futur antérieur, plus que parfait, all of them, the past participle must agree with the subject. That means if the subject is feminine, you're going to add an E to the past participle. If it is a feminine plural, you're going to add ES. And if it is simply just plural, masculine plural, it's going to be only S that you would add. Now, although this tense, which is the future anterior, le futur anterior, although it is hardly or rarely used in English, in French, it must be used under certain circumstances. This is why you should never ever translate literally to French. Now, let's move on to conjugate être and avoir in le futur. Starting off with être, it is je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, or on sera, nous serons, vous serez, and il or elle seront. Now, moving on to avoir, it is j'aurai, tu auras, il or elle or on aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, and il or elle auront. Comme ça. Now that we have done that, let us conjugate three verbs in le futur antérieur. Starting off with the verb écrire, which means to write, we're going to be using avoir to conjugate écrire in le futur antérieur parce que, or because, it does not fall under Dr. and Mrs. Van der Tram, and it is also not a pronominal verb. So that would be, j'aurais écrit, tu auras écrit, il or elle or on aura écrit, nous aurons écrit, Vous aurez écrit, and il or elles auront écrit. That would mean, I will have written, you will have written, he or she or we or one would have written, we will have written, you will have written, and they will have written. For example, j'aurai écrit la lettre avant demain. That means I will have written the letter before tomorrow. Moving on, we're going to conjugate the verb devenir, which means to become. Now, devenir is part of Dr. and Mrs. Van der Tramp. For that reason, we're going to use être to conjugate it in le futur antérieur. So that would be, je serai devenu, tu seras devenu, il sera devenu, elle sera devenu, on sera devenu. Nous serons devenus, vous serez devenus, and ils seront devenus, elles seront devenus. That would mean, I will have become, you will have become, he will have become, she will have become, we or one will have become, we will have become, you will have become and they will have become, masculine and feminine. For example, nous aurons devenu adultes en septembre, which means we will have become adults by September. And lastly, we're going to conjugate the verb se réveiller, which is a reflexive verb, a pronominal verb, basically. For that reason, we're also going to be using être to conjugate se réveiller, but we're going to be placing the pronoun before être. You're going to see. This is what it's going to look like. Je me serai réveillé. Tu te seras réveillé. Il se sera réveillé. Elle se sera réveillé. On se sera réveillé. Nous nous serons 
réveillés, vous vous serez réveillés, ils se seront réveillés and elles se seront réveillés. That would mean I will have woken up, you will have woken up, he will have woken up, she will have woken up, one or we will have woken up, we will have woken up, you will have woken up and they will have woken up, masculine and feminine. You see here also I added E for the feminine subjects, ES for feminine plural and S for plural. That is how you do it when you use être to conjugate in passé composé plus que parfait or futur antérieur and more actually there's more. <laughs> now we're going to move on to the use of le futur antérieur. Number one and the most obvious use of le futur antérieur is that it is used to describe actions that will have been completed before the future, before the future time. For example, nous aurons résolu tous les problèmes d'ici avant la fin de l'année. We'll have resolved all the problems by the end of the year. Now, the second use, something I need you to take note of. Sometimes you have a choice between le futur simple and le futur antérieur. Now, when both clauses use le futur simple, it is implied that both actions take place simultaneously. Now, if you don't know what I mean by le futur simple, just click on this video. Yeah, just click on it, go and watch it, fully understand it, then you can come back here. Or you can watch this one to the end and watch it later, that's fine. Either way, for example, Elle vous téléphonera dès qu'elle finira son roman. Which means, she will call you as soon as she finishes her novel. However, if you want to mark an anteriority, something happening before, you must use le futur anterior in that case. Now watch how we're going to transform that same sentence into a new one. Same thing though, but we'll use le futur anterior. Elle vous téléphonera dès qu'elle aura fini son roman. She'll call you as soon as she will have finished her novel. Now in English, most of the time we would say as soon as she finishes her novel. But in French, the fact that you're indicating an interiority, you must then use le futur antérieur. Let's take one more example. Dès que vous accepterez cette théorie, on en discutera plus longuement. That means, as soon as you accept this theory, we'll discuss it at length. And we're going to make mark anteriority using futur antérieur. So it's going to be, dès que vous aurez accepter cette théorie, on en discutera plus longuement. That means, as soon as you will have accepted this theory, we'll discuss it at length. Number three, the future anterior or le futur anterior can also express the probability of a past action. For example, elle aura encore échoué à ses examens. She probably failed her exams again. How sad. Il aura encore brûlé le gigot d'agneau. He probably burns the leg of the lamb again. I think he's a terrible chef. Anyway, you get the point. Fourthly, le futur antérieur is normally used after C. C as in if. It will be implying a completed action. Now, in this case, C will no longer mean if, but whether. Whether. For example, Je me demande s'ils auront signé le contrat. I wonder whether they will have signed the contract. I wonder. Another example. Je me demande si j'aurai tout réglé avant ce soir. Which means, I'm wondering whether I'll have resolved everything by tonight. Now, I want you to take note of this. In French, le futur antérieur is never used after C, implying a future condition. Mm -mm. You don't do that. If you feel like doing something like that, use the present tense instead. For example, S'il a le temps, il passera vous voir. That means if he has the time, he'll stop by to see you. If he has the time. Vous voyez? Now, before we get into the most important part of this lesson, I want you to click that subscribe button, s'il vous plaît. Just click on that subscribe button. I have You have three seconds. Smash the like button also. Yeah. Okay. Very good. If you haven't. Anyway, moving on. Classwork. Now you're going to fill in the blank space with the correct conjugation of the verb in brackets. You're going to conjugate the verb in brackets in le futur antérieur. Number one. 
elle apprend Dash le français à Bordeaux. Elle aura appris le français à Bordeaux. Elle aura appris le français à Bordeaux. Two. Elle se reposait Dash des semaines au bord du lac. Oui, elle se sera reposée des semaines au bord du lac. And last one. Il mourir depuis longtemps. Il mourir depuis longtemps. Il sera mort depuis longtemps. Il sera mort depuis longtemps. How many did you get? Write it down for me in the comments. Do not cheat. Do not lie. Write your exact score. Even if it's zero, just go for it. It's fine. No one is going to judge you. I might. I might judge you. But don't worry. You wouldn't know if I did. Anyway, this is the end of the video. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done that. Connect with me on my other platforms, TikTok and Instagram, or Instagram and TikTok. I post there every single day short, concise videos that will be very, very helpful to you. So connect with me. And once again, my name is Elizabeth Nkere, and on this channel, we make learning French fun and interesting. So subscribe if you still haven't done that for my wicked people out there. Subscribe, okay? Subscribe, you're not going to regret it. And I'll see you in the next video or maybe on Instagram or TikTok, anyone. A bientôt.